All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to World Plone Day 2022. I'm Riku Pekka Oksanen from Finland. University of Jyväskylä is my day job, and I'm here with Kim Paulisen from, from where you are. Hi, uh, from uh, Belgium, the University of Leuven. Perfect. And today we wanted to discuss about the uh, use cases, how we use Plon in our universities and uh, how we have used it during the years. And, and basically kind of like um, share stories and information about Plon in this context. Uh, mm. So if we start from, uh, from the big picture, uh, for, since when have you used Plone in, in your university and to what kind of uh, purposes? Well, for a very long time now, I'm, I'm guessing since 2007, but as I said, I would have to look it up. But yeah. we've been running since Plone 3 in, in the early days, did a migration to Plone 4, going to Plone 5 now. So we've been through the whole motions at the university and we use it for most of the public facing websites of the university. So that means all the uh, faculties and departments, mm. all huge uh, sites where all web content is maintained. And besides that, we also use Plone for the KU Leuve intranet. So mm. that's the, the non-public part where people have to log in and find all staff related or uh well what's the word <laughs> well non-public <laughs> information and, yeah. and we, we did a revamp we talked about that last year it's now called my KU Leuven, uh the intranet so that got a full revamp inside clone cool um, um how big is your university how many students and uh, staff members roughly uh, uh roughly i don't know about students I, I'd have to guess 20, 30,000, but staff members, 10,000 yeah, uh, cool. using the intranet. So it's a pretty, pretty big group Yeah, of, uh, of people using our, our Plone system for the web content and applications. So yeah, pretty big. I don't know if I, I should show the, the website. Yeah, uh, yeah, please do. I'll, I'll do this and now you can. Yeah, now it shows perfectly. So this is the get a bit smaller. We actually did a full uh, revamp of the house style, but we'll talk more about that in the use cases. So this is all a clone site with a with a new house style, and as you see, this is a list of the faculties. I don't know many. I'm just gonna open up. Hmm. I'll show you some, so you can see some of the use case because it has slight variations in the style. And it's a card based. Uh... So you see a very much consistent look and feel throughout everything. And mm. also one of the benefits of Plone being that uh, people can actually edit their pages uh, inside this look and feel and, and immediately while editing, see what it will look like on the screen. So that's always been one of the nice benefits we've had in yeah. Plone. Yeah, it's real. What you see is what you get yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh, which Plone version is that latest uh, site running? Uh, now still four. Mm -hmm. uh, the latest uh, four version, I don't know, 4319. Yeah. Um, and actually the last year has been uh, mostly dedicated to migrating the whole thing to Plone 5. Ah, cool. So that is actually, uh, I don't know if I can talk about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. This All right. Is the biggest migrations we've ever done at our university. Yeah. 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 So, sounds cool. Um, all right. We're going to talk about the, like the recent project soon, but uh, in, in University of Uvascula, uh, I think we beat you there since we started using Plone in 2004. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> uh, and uh, I could also show some 
some of the use cases. Uh, we have done uh, a lot with Plone since mm -hmm. Plone 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and now even the Plone 6 uh, versions are running in some sites. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> I'm jealous. Uh, let, uh, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> uh, uh, I'll give a short preview. So the university website has been running on Plone since 2005 <clears throat> and gone through several migrations from Plone 2.5 to wow. like to 5.2. So it's a full circle, and yeah. and uh, but. So there are like the consistent, uh, consistent way of using it, and the pages look the same. If you look at them, but there's a, a it's kind of nice to see. Yeah, and we, then, we have the same. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very old content, but pe people still well. Yeah, it's nice for them to have the history and even go back in time sometimes yeah. to see what it was before. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, there are some uh, basically the same same visual style, maybe some different layouts yeah. uh, on some other sites, and it's bilingual. So there's a Finnish and English version, of course, and and some subsites have like three languages with Swedish also. But um, uh, since we have had flown for a long time, we have done some other things too. So. This doesn't look like much, but it's one of our learning management systems called COPPA. Ah. And it was integrated to our study information system. So whenever, when a course was created and people enlisted to that course, we then like integrated so that all the students that are enlisted to the course can access the like study materials in COPPA. And, and this has worked really easily throughout the years since 2009 and there are some hundred thousand like assignments returned and then hundreds of thousands of pages so there's a lot of like study material and that's that's it you just uh, share the material to the students and and it works we of course have, have moodle nowadays also but yeah this was one of the sucks stories and other rather old but uh, still trustworthy system is MoneyViestin. This is our video publishing platform. And mm, this has been around since 2003. And it was uh, originally built on SOAP and then Plone 2 and uh, 3 and 4. And uh, there are like, if you look all the videos together, it would be almost three years of videos. So there's a lot of wow. video material. That's and we yeah uh, and, you and we do that all in plan. <laughs> yeah yeah and <clears throat> and we embed those videos a lot to the moodle courses and coppa courses and other systems so basically this is the place to put the videos and then they are used from other systems so but uh yeah it's been a really good story and, and useful loan mm. What else do we have? Uh, uh, well, this is a student compass. This is something I'm going to talk about shortly, like a, a new version of our like a student well-being program or, and and mental health or, and stuff like that. So that's a, a talk for something else. And then we have the intranet built on Plon. This is Plon 5. And yeah, so it's for faculty members and a lot of news items and, yeah. and 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 instructions and stuff like that and yeah what else maybe the newer stuff i'll i'll talk later but yeah. uh, but uh, those kind of things and uh, lots of like forms clone has a built-in form editor mm -hmm. and that we have used a lot uh, really much and and then there are um, we do like form-based uh, 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 digital workflows, so you can get rid oh. of paper in some cases when you just take clone and use the workflow engine that's there and then the forms and stuff like that. So uh, there's a lot and, <laughs> and it's been quite a ride. I can imagine. 
I, I hope yeah. you you have a big team to support it because I know at our university we all those things like you say uh, learning platform and the video management service mm. and uh, uh, the workflow tools are all in different systems at our university managed by other teams because yeah. they're all pretty big projects to to handle. So. Yeah. Well, we don't have big team and not many <laughs> members, but uh, partly because of uh, some really good developers and, and yeah. people, and, and maybe partly because of we can do all this using Plown. Yeah, you have that has knowledge. been possible. Yeah. yeah, one system can do a lot of things, and so Very you don't have to like learn all the different things. All the other systems, or yeah. Yeah. So yeah that that's that's for like the history but uh, uh what's the situation right now what have we done in the past year what would you want to show and talk of about that uh let's see well one thing i already showed is well let me open up the house style Am I sharing? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's shared. <laughs> but this is, as we said, uh, one of the last things we did is just very recent is that we did a restyling again, which is uh, this. And we also have, a, oh, let me open that. Uh, it's a new house style where we also have a small style guide, which we're actually going to update very soon. So we have a a list of all the elements that the university can use in a mm. style guide with all also all the technical information, of course. And here people can find their uh, the different elements they would like to use. And as you can see, these are very nicely implemented in many of the different uh, yeah. places in the faculties. And that actually, normally, I know last time it took us like a year to implement everything. This was a bit smaller, mm. but we did have to change all in the editor, the visual editor, the ways that people uh, adjust the different blocks. So now they can change the images, browse for images, change the background of, of these little blocks here, or change the yeah. image, add buttons. And we did that in a 10 week planning round. So that in yeah. itself was was very nice that we could do this a lot faster now than we're used to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then this is also, of course, being done. Uh, well, that's what we're doing now. We already had a Plone 5 set up in test, and we're now moving this house style, obviously, to the Plone 5 setup. Yeah. Uh, what else do I need to say? Well, as I said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, because the problem is that I can't really show <laughs> very much. <laughs> Of the, of the Plum 5 migration, which is yeah. one of the largest uh, migrations, as I said, for the university. Uh, we did a bunch of customizations for Plum 4. The system is integrated with LDAP and Shibboleth for mm. authentication and authorization. Um, and then, as I said, the house style, uh, we are moving to Plum 5 with Mosaic, which is the drag and drop. Uh, yeah. Edit interface in Plone. And it's, it, well, maybe if I have time later, I will do a little demo or add a video to the world Plone. Yeah. Maybe we'll do yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, I could also show some mosaic pages. We have been using it in our Plone 5 site. So. Yeah, I wanted so, to yeah. ask later, like if, if you have examples of. of yeah, yeah, mosaic sure. I, I can. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the main idea of the Plone 5 is, which is most of uh, the last year is that we had to move all that customization into the Plone 5 code and we're moving mm. to um, Plone 5.2, which is also Python 3. So that's yeah. also a Python 2 to Python 3 migration. Um, so yeah, that that's basically annoyingly, because I, I guess our management is tired of hearing the word Plone 5 migration by now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what, yeah, what, we often forget is that, as we said in the beginning, a university is a massive uh, block of content. We, yeah. we, well, I don't know, but we know I have one site with over 200,000 items 
inside. Yeah. It's just yeah. one side. It's the biggest yeah. one with the homepage, of course. Uh, yeah. But we have several more, like the intranet, and then every faculty and department is also mm. a huge block of content. We did every piece of customization you did over years. You have to redo because all the content with its metadata, yeah. like categorization, needs yeah. to be ported in in the Plum Five code and tested. Is that mm. so? Takes a lot of time. And that's just the code migration. And then once you have all the code migrated, you have to take all those thousands of items uh, and migrate that content too. Yeah, and yeah. Not just all the pages and news items and events and links and making sure that all the internal links and the images mm -hmm. keep working on every page. Uh, and besides that, like you said, we also use Plone as a, a, a form generator tool. Mm. We are also using Plumform Gen in the well, relatively latest version, but yeah. in Plum 5, as you know, we go from archetypes to, to dexterity content yeah. types. We have to do the form migration to Collective Easy Form, which is mm. now the form tool. And what we also <laughs> completely underestimated is because I know we have, um, well, it's, it's, it's pretty much okay. We have about 10 to 15,000 forms. Wow, that's... But that's yeah, that's thousands. And even yeah. if you see like only five percent of those, something weird will happen. That's yeah. still over a thousand forms. So yeah, <laughs> you can't just say yeah. So that that's a lot of work. And all those forms even also have saved data, which comes with a whole bunch of Unicode and and yeah. uh, other problematic uh, stuff. So yeah, that that's one of the reasons why why a migration can take. A lot of time but but even then the the end goal is obviously that we're removing a bunch of technical debt because we're finally mm. moving to python 3 i know it's yeah late. yeah it's i guess you have the same at your university when it's such a huge system you can't just change that overnight yeah and then uh the the big benefit is that besides the technical debt that people will be able to uh, they've been asking for a bunch of features over the couple of years, which is, well, what I feel strongly about is sort of a drag and drop editor, because now when yeah. they want to add a collection or an RSS feed inside on their homepage, like show me the five latest news items, that's yeah. still not that easy. We made mm -hmm. little solutions for that in Plone 4, but it's very static. And with the mosaic, with the drag and drop, that becomes fully flexible. You can say, yeah. give yeah. me this collection or even create your own query put that in a page, uh, give people permission on one piece of content and say, in this other page, I want to insert a piece of existing content that other people are editing. Yeah. Mosaic comes with a bunch of those things that out of the box that I feel will make the editing environment a lot better for most yeah. of all of our editors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do agree. and. And when you think of the migrations, it's a, it's a technical work and it's a really yeah. much work for you, but uh, then the content editors and they, they just uh, get the new version. It doesn't like uh, bother them that much. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's important to keep the massive amount of content still working and intact. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did the migration a couple of years ago to Plone 5, but uh, but there are still archetypes, so there's still Python 3 work to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have some sites running on, on Plone 5 to Python 3 already? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. And, and, and those uh, Plone 6 sites also. So we are partly oh. done, but there's still <laughs> work to do. But uh, what I find interesting is that uh, you can still run Plone 4 sites from 10 years ago and, and they're yeah. still supported, they're still secure and still yeah. highly usable. So that's kind of one of the values of having Plone that uh, there is always the like the long life cycle of the product, which yeah. is important for universities where you don't just run every year differently, but uh, you yeah. can like <laughs> stay safe for many years to come. Exactly. Yeah. We will do the same. We'll keep a Plone 4 version open once we migrate because yeah. we knew that in that Plone 4 version, 
they they well that's still secure so people can access the content but they can also yeah. access all the archive of that content yeah. which for some yeah. places is very important yeah yeah and then uh, yeah 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 that's that's really interesting uh let me show some of our our stuff uh, upcoming stuff uh, i'll yeah. shortly give a preview to mosaic editor so here we have the digital services site this is in finnish but uh, as you can see there's this kind of like some kind of box layout yeah. we are using it's not the prettiest of our site since we wanted to emphasize more of the <clears throat> uh usable links and stuff like that and the big but, banner images but anyway what we uh, often say the prettiness of the site is also very much the responsibility of the content manager yeah and yeah. and not everyone has a automatic eye for for design yeah we we have marketing service for example sometimes helping people create yeah. a nice uh, yeah. And, and we started with like pretty rigid mosaic layout so the mm -hmm. users could only change a couple of uh, things but then uh, marketing and users wanted like a full <laughs> uh, full flexibility and that has been a yeah. blessing and also a curse since there are now yeah. everything is possible and it, yeah. um, it breaks the consistency of the pages but uh, but yeah mosaic i think this is amazing i can just uh, yeah like drag and drop stuff and it changes <laughs> yeah. and you're not doing this on a live side are you yeah i'm i'm doing it since uh, but i won't save it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so uh, yeah this, this this is pretty nice and yeah. uh, and we have also created some uh, custom blocks which which uh, where you can like highlight some content or or nice. add some images and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Create custom tiles for mosaic, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. We and, uh, we're also well, we're in the process of doing that for also integration with uh, some of the data services, like the staff information and in the future mm -hmm. uh, information on publications or projects, because we have the Elasticsearch data services for that at yeah. the university. And we will, well, that's one of our things we're looking forward to is creating nice tiles for people to integrate that content into their pages as well. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's really nice. And, and you can definitely like create these blocks yeah. or tiles uh, as you like. And uh, well, we have, the, have this for many years. So there are lots of custom content. Yeah, that's, that's a blown five thingy. Um, yeah. But during the, the last year, yeah. Are the the editors happy uh, with the drag and drop editor now that since they've used it? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. are happy, and and we don't hear a lot of from the editors. Maybe we don't ask yeah. enough, but uh, yeah, but but, uh, yeah. but, but uh, considering the amount of content editors and content, there's not that much like support requests and questions to technical side so we have the same someone once told me if you hear nothing you did yeah. a perfect job yeah because <laughs> <laughs> if something's wrong people will come and tell you <laughs> yeah that that's true um, <clears throat> uh, but in the last year uh, in our university we have uh, started sh shifting to towards plone 6 which mm -hmm. is like still in alpha stage but basically yeah. plone 6 um, is kind of two things it's uh, either like plone 5 on steroids with the new uh, updated and really uh, easy to use uh, like plone 6 classic interface which reminds this uh, plone 5 yeah and then we have uh, the plone 6 uh, the default interfaces which is called volto and that has been totally built from ground up using react uh, yeah. and uh, it makes it really really fast and and the user interfaces much simplified and and it's uh, maybe easier for new developers to get the grasp grasp of uh, this react based front end and because they're so, all little react components the volto blocks right yeah 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 that's true and, and the intuitive editing interface is is like you showed in mosaic only 
a bit more modern looking when you yeah. edit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and nice. I could uh, show, we don't have, uh, like we have a couple of uh, Plone 6 sites and uh, <clears throat> uh, some are like these really simple. Uh, you can see this is just a small site with yeah. a navigation and and uh, language versions and a big banner image. And mm -hmm. uh, if I quickly show the editing experience from here, you can see that it's just a yeah. edit and content and add new and that's it. And Very then I, if I go to edit it, all these uh, like, yeah. uh, these are called blocks in, in the new user interface and you can yeah. also drag and drop these and, and uh, you can definitely make these like a uh, grid based layouts here and ah nice and <clears throat> and also ask here we have later on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we have a video of embeds and, and stuff like that and each like wow. block has its own like editing uh, interface on the right yeah so this has also been something that the new users like yeah. but <clears throat> but a couple of more um, like examples of volta usage mm -hmm. is kind of uh, weird we have this uh, this is a gatsby js site so this is a static uh -huh. site that shows our study guide from our study information system but our mm -hmm. open university wanted to like um, uh, enrich the content uh, from uh, like manually updated uh, uh, text and images and videos, which wasn't possible in the study information system, which only gives the like a basic structure of studies. Yeah. So in this uh, site, we are using uh, Plone 6 as a back end to update these uh, tabs here and this content, and then also yeah. content in some of the uh, content that comes from the study oh. information system. Yeah. So this is kind of uh, interesting case to uh, use Plone, Plone 6. And here we have the backend side. This is like vanilla Plone 6 using the yeah. Volto interface. And they can and, change the content there. Yeah. And yeah. if you change it here, uh, I think I have the, uh, so this is the content in the live site, uh, yeah. as you can see, but uh, you can easily edit it. Uh, through the so Volta site. Your Gatsby JS actually uses Plone as a headless CMS for the content. Yeah. And it's then <laughs> builds it well. Yeah. 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 yeah no, because I, I think, was it Asko that wrote the Gatsby Plone content plugin? Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Nice. And, and this being uh, like a really nice, a uh, really, really fast accessible site and, and easy to update. And when we just uh, gave this Plone 6 to content editors who had, uh, some of them had used Plone before and mm -hmm. some of them haven't. And there were some, maybe even 40 uh, content editors at the time. We didn't need to give any training to them. We just wow. go there and do the, do your stuff. And click uh, on the add new button and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. So that's uh, one of the, great things about this new new interface for new users. Very intuitive then. That's yeah. good to hear. <laughs> yeah. So but that's a uh, You were going to make our university jealous because we are <laughs> we're still we're starting a new project for exactly the same like the the study guide where you yeah. have all the information on the master of theology and all yeah. the subjects that are inside. Yeah. We yeah. are also well we're still doing that in in uh, yeah. partly in Plone 4. For, yeah. for the nice edit interface, because people wanted more flexible, nice pages to yeah. show the, yeah. But that's an idea for the future. Then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's kind of odd, odd uh, thing. But uh, one more thing from last year, this is, uh, oh, uh, two things, actually. This is uh, like a Plone 6 site also using the new interface. This is uh, mm -hmm. like, a, course registration system for our open university where you can yeah. um, go there and purchase courses and then register to University of Uvascula using uh, like a strong uh, identification with your passport or ID and it's all wow. here. So uh, this is like a 
integration between clone and identification server and then Moodle and payment system and uh, and I was just thinking you have to integrate all those systems with clone then yeah yeah yes. and but it's uh, it's doable and it's possible and this year we are going to like uh, this is only the English version for international students but this year we are going to release a, a version for Finnish students uh, for different kinds of backgrounds so they can use their bank uh, identification to get yeah. the registration to our university so this is going to be one of the major blown six use cases in our university this year is that can i ask what plugin you use is that the plus plugins automatic or did you make your own uh, can't well i don't know exactly what it was no. yeah sorry no. but it works so <laughs> yeah it works yeah <laughs> yeah um, and I, I, I got one more uh, example of uh, this year's achievements. Yeah, mm -hmm. this uh, student compass page. Yeah. Uh, we have been using this since like for 10 years now. Uh, it was uh, pre originally built on Plone 4. And there are mm -hmm. like two use cases. The university students can log in and, and browse for the content. That's uh, like a good content for managing different kinds of situations like stress or an anxiety and uh, mm -hmm. other well-being stuff. And then there's this um, like guided uh, courses uh, a couple of times each year where the students log in using these, um, not their own user ID, but uh, something like OK student one, two, three, four. So their uh, identity is safe even in that way. And they yeah. update their uh, learning diary and then the coach from the university, some psychology student, they answer to their questions and kind of work through the process of getting better. So this is uh, like an example that we put uh, this kind of even not medical information, but highly classified information yeah. to clone. Mm -hmm. And we still feel pretty uh, okay with it. So it, it's safe in there. All GDPR so, compliant and such. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and this year we made this uh, pretty big uh, facelift to the site. So it's mm -hmm. like uh, nice and it has nice colors and it's, it's, it's accessible. And uh, we have this uh, faceted search for, for trainings. Oh, yeah. So there are different kinds of uh, trainings that uh, have maybe video yeah. uh, or they have reading exercises or uh, and they are then maybe connected to certain theme. So there are lots of this kind of uh, uh, yeah. customization. Is that using the clone default search? Uh, it's using uh, this uh, EEA faceted yeah, search faceted plugin. Yeah, that's that's really powerful and yeah, works yeah. nicely. Yeah, going to use it too in our Clone Five setup. Yeah. So basically, this uh, really nice looking, pretty, yeah. pretty like friendly <laughs> content, yeah. and uh, and also the video embeds are from our own video system. So that ah, nice. Do you do you have someone who makes your designs, or is that all in the IT department or a designer? Yeah, in my team right now we have a great designer uh, uh -huh. that uh, that did part of this. And but uh, in this case we also or the customer used an outside uh, designer to do yeah. some of these things. But uh, uh, this okay. took a lot of uh, like a design effort to make it yeah. Yeah. like friendly imagine. and pretty and. I'm usually That's, the one doing the CSS on the, yeah. it's, it's well, the bulk of it. And it's, it's a lot of detailed work, yeah. but the end result is, is always very nice to see. Yeah. And that's a Python three and blown five. So it's future proof in that sense. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> that kind of stuff from the recent times. Yeah. Very interesting things you did there.
Yeah, we should do this more often. <laughs> like, yeah, talk exactly. to each other. It's like a showcase. You, you always forget how many cool things people do with Plone. And yeah. Because yeah. obviously, yeah. Well, we, yeah. we have a day job playing with Plone. <laughs> mm. uh, do you have any like uh, ideas for the future or want to like sum up the things you are focusing next uh, with Plone? Uh, well, it's a bit, well, I, I don't want to say boring, but I can't do all the nice, show all the nice projects that mm. you have. But uh, um, the, the plans now are to start migrating with the different faculties and departments to their Plone 5 site, and a lot of work will go into that. So not, not that much then. But as I said, the idea is to create more tiles that integrate with the data services and mm. um, also make something for the researchers uh, because we, we're getting more data on everything research related of the different people. So we will make systems to integrate that nicely in all the research uh, websites that are also hosted because they can add like a full research group and add all of the publications and projects there. We'll do uh, a revamp and a reintegration of all the new data that will be in there. But that's, yeah. Not, not for the next year, probably. And, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, fi find better ways to insert nice tiles that integrate the content like that, of mm. other content, like for example, the stuff from the study guides, we will create components, uh, obviously move to, yeah, to uh, maybe Plone 6 in the future for some mm. projects like the study guide. But yeah, we, we still have to do analysis on yeah. the that. What else will we do? Ah, we're integrating um, also on the planning, all for after <laughs> Plone 5. We have a lot of those nice, cool projects coming. Uh, in integration with OpenID, because we're now using Shibboleth and, yep. and going to OpenID. Uh, yeah, but mostly after Plone 5, making sure that all the university data is integrated and easily usable inside the pages for our editors. That, that yep. will be the most plans. Ah, and also, but that's one of the things that I would like to see is that uh, we also have a very good development team um, that does PHP development. They're doing mm -hmm. Laravel. Yeah. But um, they, they're they very good uh, front-end developers as well. So the idea is to have people create content inside Plone mm -hmm. and then use the data from Plone, well, use it as a headless CMS and then yeah. use the data from all the Plone sites where people then ca can categorize it. So the maybe the, the PHP team can then create applications to do faceted uh, search components for different pieces of content. Like, I don't know, an events application or a news application that will search all the website content. That's one yeah. of the things I'm looking forward to, the possibilities that it will then have because Plone 5, as you know, comes with a built-in REST API. Yeah, yeah. Is able to query all the content and all its metadata, and that I think will open up a lot of interesting solutions to problems we don't know we have yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that sounds great. And and about using Plone as a backend, uh, I forgot to mention that we also use it uh, as a backend to. Um, put some content in our university uh, mobile app. So oh, yeah. when we want to uh, publish certain like banners to the app, uh, there's a, yeah. this banner section and then we can go to this Plone 6 site and easily edit it there and it goes to the mobile app, oh, which yeah. is built That's on Flutter. Yeah. On Flutter, wow. Yeah. Nice new tech there. I, yeah. we, we actually also have a KU Leuven app, which is also using content from Plone now, but yeah. we will need to migrate that to the rest of it. That's actually yeah. a good idea. Yeah. It's yeah. another project. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, the, the rest API, that's an that's impressive feature yeah. for any use. Um, uh, when it comes to us, yeah, there's this registration portal, uh, like uh, renewal and making it bigger. And, wow. and then we are building some, uh, these smaller Plone 6 sites and learning about the new version and kind of uh, finding a way to uh, quickly and easily create these small 
uh, slightly custom sites. Yeah. And then uh, maybe the third uh, big one is uh, hopefully going to be the uh, renewal of our video publishing platform. So yeah. which we have used for 20 years almost now. That's and uh, building it on Plone 6 technologies. And so it's going to be an uh, interesting yeah. effort to keep all the old data yeah. intact and still update it. But uh, so far, as I know, there are like migration scripts already from Plone 4 to Plone 5 and then from Plone 5 to Plone 6. So the content should be doable. But we definitely want to like utilize the new faster user interface and all the things there and there are a couple of tricks in our sleeve for even more features so yeah. i'm i am hoping that we get to like start doing that at some point yeah nice plans ahead <laughs> yeah all right uh kim it's been a real pleasure <laughs> and i said we should do this more often but uh thank you so much and exactly have a thank nice world blown day yeah it's it's been a great time talking to you, Rebecca. Hope to see you again soon. Yes, all right. Bye bye. Bye bye.